Well, hello once again. Welcome to this business tutorial class presented to you by O3 Schools Jam app. Um, O3 Schools Jam app helps you as you prepare for a jam. It has several features which are very, very good for students and even for some educators as you prepare other students for jam. Um, it has the mock exam setting where you can pretend you're in the jam hall and just write and see what you score. It also has a way for you to search for questions per topic, per subject, so that as you read any topic as you're preparing, you can actually search for all questions that have to do with that subject on the jam bar and answer them to assure yourself they are truly ready to face any question that jam might give you in that topic. So the app is very, very good. All you need to do to assess these features is um, pay the sum of 2,500 Naira. Now, um, to pay this amount, you can see the steps in your app, and there's no reason to be scared. I know some of us might have been scammed before, but I can show you we are trustworthy, and you pay for your activation, and you shall get your activation. It's pretty that simple. There is no issues there. And with that, let's get off to this class. And in this class, we shall be looking at elasticity. Elasticity. What does elasticity mean? Um, if you've ever had any material, or much more easy to remember, a rubber band. If you stretch a rubber band, the rubber band gets longer or bigger. And once you remove your hand, the rubber band tends to return back to the original shape and size. So elasticity is a phenomenon where material regains its original shape and size once the distorting force has been removed. A force is needed to cause elasticity, to cause the change. But once you can leave it and that material goes back, it's elastic. So materials can stretch and not return. Those materials are mainly ductile, but not elastic. For elastic materials, they can try stretch and then they go back. So like I was saying, elastic materials are those materials that undergo the phenomenon of elasticity. Okay, now um, in these materials, these elastic materials, there's a law that governs their behavior, how they stretch and return. And this law is known as Hooke's law. This is Hooke's law. And Hooke's law simply states that the extension produced in an elastic material is proportional to the force, provided the elastic limit is not exceeded. Now, this keyword, elastic limit, is very, very, very important. This elastic limit is simply a force that once you go greater than this force, Hooke's law can no longer apply. Hooke's law applies from a certain number beneath that elastic limit down to zero. Once you surpass that limit, your Hooke's law becomes invalid and as such, may no longer be used to solve that problem. But for anyone within the range of Hooke's law or under the elastic limit, the force is proportional to the extension. And as a result, introducing your constant, F equals to Ke. F is your force. E is your extension. Y K is your constant, which is known as simply force constant, or may also be called stiffness. That is Hooke's law. E is the extension, the change in length. And um, with this in mind, there are several other things we shall look at other hooks. So, for example, you walk down by an elastic material. Say you put a stone in a catapult, a stretch catapult. Once you release it, the stone flies far. Why? The simple idea is conservation of energy. The energy you place into that elastic material was stored, and on release, that elastic energy was transformed into kinetic energy, which then makes the stone move away. And therefore, the elastic potential energy or the work done in an elastic material is given by 1 over 2 Fe. But if you look up here, F equals Ke, right? So I can replace this F with Ke. And there's T E here. And obviously, E times E is E squared. So we can have 1 over 2 Fe, or we can have 1 over 2 
k e squared. Those are your formulas. We can need the work done by the elastic material or the energy stored within that material. Now, um, as we proceed, the other things you then begin to see as you study elasticity. Um, some of these are stress and strain. Stress and strain. Stress and strain are some very important concepts. And at this O level, we're still looking at the simplest form, which is the tensile stress and the tensile strain. This is stress and strain occurring in only one axis. Now, um, as you go forward, the field study engineering may look at other types of stress and strain, shear stress and others. But now we're focusing purely on the tensile stress and the tensile strain. What's tensile stress? Stress is simply force over area. The force being applied divided by the cross sectional area. And please remember, if the area is a circle, then area will be pi d squared over 4. While the tensile strain is simply the extension over the original length. Tensile strain is the extension being produced divided by the original length. And as you are aware, extension and length also have the same unit. And as a result, strain has no units. And from these two, a new thing is created, which is known as Young's modulus. Young's modulus can be seen with letter E, and this modulus is simply the ratio of the stress to the strain. But if you look over here, the stress is F over E. This over becomes divided, and the strain is E over L. So for mathematics, this should give me F over A times L over E, telling me that Young's modulus is simply FL over AE. Now, this is yet another formula that we should take note of. And based on our knowledge of Young's modulus, instantly, we know that Hooke's law can then be restated. There's a new statement for Hooke's law which simply states that the tensile stress in the material is proportional to the tensile strain in that material. Provided that, oops, provided that elastic limit, sorry, is not exceeded. So that's another way to say hook so. If I elastic in terms of the force and the extension, or in terms of stress and strain, when you use stress and strain, the constant becomes Young's modulus. And funny enough, this is pretty much all we need to know about stress and strain. It's really one of the simplest topics you have in physics. And once we truly understand this, we are trying to read it right now to solve some questions. So let's see. Obviously, once we come to solving questions, there is nothing better to use than our O3 schools jam app. So which you shall turn now and then search for questions having to do with this topic so that we can solve them. So let's see. Accessing our phone, we simply open our O3 Schools Jab app and we begin to search for questions. Um, all right. Our first question has been found. This question comes from the year 2014. This is the year 2014. And this is question number 16. The question says, a force of 500 newton is applied to a steel wire of cross-sectional area 0.2 meter squared force of 500 newton applied to wire of area 0.2 meter squared they want us to find the tensile stress and this is truly one of the simpler questions we ever see stress is force over area that will be 500 over 0.2 and um that will Value point two. If you press that here, calculator gives you 2500 newton per squared meter. However, that is not in my options, right? My options are all in standard form. So, all I have to do is simply move your point backwards one, two, three, 2.5 times 10 to the power 3 newton per squared meter. That is all. Very, very simple. 
we'll move on to the year 2013 and we'll look at question number 13 in that year 2013 question 13. calculate the work done when a force of 20 newton force of 20 newton stretches a spring by 50 millimeters now right here all you have to remember is conversion we don't solve in millimeters we solve in meters converting is simply divided by 1000 50 over 1000 is 0 0.05 meters and as such the work done must be 1 over 2 f e so 1 over 2 times 20 times 0 0.05 and that will give me 0 0.5 joules with my calculator and that is option b so you see the solvents are not even taking much spaces Elasticity is truly one of those simple topics that you should not fail. Um, question 3 from the year 2012. And now this is question 15. If a load of 1 kg, now this is a little bit tricky. The load is our force, obviously, and we're told it's 1 kg. But we know we cannot have this in 1 kg. Therefore, if the load must be vertical, and then the weight will be mg times 10. 10 newton. If this stretches a cord by 1.2 centimeters, sorry, 1.2 centimeters over 100 in 0 0.012 meters, then we have been asked what is the force constant? Force constant of stiffness is K. So, formula to find force constant, we know F and E, we know that F equals k e and therefore my f being 10 my k is unknown times e 0 0.012 so over 0 0.012 over 0 0.012 and again imputing this into your calculator i have to open my calculator right here so i can divide this as well that would simply be 10 divided by 0 0.012 and the answer is 833 Point three three newton per meter. If I go back to my jump up, I realize that that must be option B. Though they simply took the asteroid in the rest for number, so it's three three newton per meter. Okay, see they have been simple. Let's keep going. Question four. This is from the year two thousand eleven. Question number fourteen. In this case, a copper wire was subjected to a tensile stress. The stress was 7.7 .7 times 10 to power 7 newton per square meter. We have been asked to then calculate the tensile strain of the wire, given that Young's modulus is 1.1 times 10 to power 11. This is quite simple, really, because you must remember modulus equals to stress over strain. And that, therefore, this strain, sorry if I'm obstructing you just a bit, this strain must be stress over the modulus. So, coming over here, what is my stress? 7.7 .7 times 10 to the power 7. And what's my modulus? 1.1 times 10 to the power 11. Now we have to do a bit of arithmetic here. Separating them, as I always said, if you have numbers with standard form that you cannot solve, simply use your knowledge of mathematics by doing this 7.7 .7 over 1.1 times 10 raised to the power 10 from the laws of indices, 7 minus 11. 7.7 .7 over 1.1 with your calculator gives you 7. Then 7 minus 11 is minus 4. Because I know strain has no units. I don't put any units and this is my answer so if i check my app i can see yes that is exactly how it is in option d you see very very simple we can actually just keep going um for our fifth question this is now the year 2008 and a spring of force constant as k equals to 500 newton per meter is compressed such that its length shortens by 5 cm. 
extension is 5 cm but converting to meters gives me 0 0.05 meters but to find the energy being stored energy or work done like we always said is simply 1 over 2 now i would have used fe but instead of having f i have k and e is there a formula that makes use of k and e yes 1 over 2 k e squared so 1 over 2 times 500 times 0 0.05 squared so one more time we'll go back to our calculator 1 over 2 times 500 is 250 0 0.05 times 0 0.05 is 0 0.625 joules and you see quickly so quickly we solved five questions on this topic they are truly very very simple let's take a few more and then we shall be sure that we truly have this well in hand and we'll be able to move on now question number six yes this is question six this one then says an elastic material has length of 36 cm. The length is 36 cm. When a load of 40 newton, 40 newton is hung on it and a length of 45 cm. So now notice we're having two lengths. I shall call this one L1 and the corresponding force F1. So my new length will be L2 as um, 45 cm. When a load of 60 newton F2 is hung on it, we have to find the original length of the string. Because you must have noticed now, instead of being told extension, I'm being told length. And if you remember, if I want to find the length extension, it must be the final length minus the initial length. Both these lengths, my L1 and L2, are final lengths. Therefore, my initial length, see they both start from the same place, must be Li. Now, you must please note this formula. Just because F equals to Ke and K equals to F over E, then in some cases like this, when you have two forces, you should please note that F1 over E1 must be equal to F2 over E2. It makes the solving much quicker. Now, if you don't want to use this method, you can simply say, okay, with the first one, F equals to KE. Then you try and find K from the first one, and then use that from the second one. But it's not always that easy. This is much quicker and direct. So, if I apply the logic of that formula to my new question, um, I know that the extension, like we said, must be final minus initial, right? Therefore, when I say f1 i put 40 but when i say e1 i'm going to say this final length of 36 minus the initial length which i do not know li equals to f2 60 over again extension the final length 45 minus the initial length which i do not know and this one of you may be asking but the length are in centimeters why is something in centimeters all you need to know about that is that you can solve length in centimeters because all the lengths are in centimeters and my options also are in centimeters. So there's no real need to convert. They are actually cancel each other out when needed. Therefore, I can simply go straight. Um, zero can take care of zero here quite simply. So into six is three, into four is two. And that is as much as we could possibly cancel out. So just multiply. 2 times 45 minus Li will equal 3 times 36 minus Li. 2 times 45 is 90. This is 2 Li. 3 times 36 is 108. This is 3 Li. Collect like times. 90 minus 108 equals to minus 3 Li plus 2 Li. 90 minus 108. Is minus 18 minus 3 plus 2 is minus li minus cancels minus li must be equal to 18 centimeters so the initial length is 18 centimeters option b so you see these are simple simple questions very very easy um question seven yeah we are going to the year 2004 
question number 35. Yes, 2004. The number is 35. Here we are told if a force of 50 newton stretches a wire from 20 meters. Now, from must give me the initial length of 20 meters. So 20.01 meters. This was the final 20.01 meters. What is the amount of force? Now, as member, like I just said, if there is now a new force, it must be F2. This must be F1. So one, one. So what must the new force? What is the amount of force required to stretch the same material from 20 meters? I mean, my Li2 will also be 20 meters. But now we are stretching it from 20 meters to 20.05 meters. So 20.05. Now remember, I'm not trying to work in with length, so I'm trying to extension. So E1 will be LF1 minus Li1. 20.01 minus 20. 0 0.01 meters. While E2 will be LF2 minus LI2, 20.05 minus 20, which is 0 0.05 meters. So with that, I think I know all the values I will need to solve. I know F1, I don't know F2. I know E1 and I know E2. And those are what I will actually use in my solving. So let's go. Using the formula as we found here, F1 over E1, remember I said this formula you use in fact, you want to compare two different things. If there are two forces, you should be using this formula. So I'll be 50 over 0 0.01 goes to F2, which we do not know, over 0 0.05. First multiply 0 0.01 F2 goes to 50 times 0 0.05 over 0 0.01 was 0.01 therefore f2 must be calculator time 50 times 0 0.05 divided by 0 0.01 that is 250 newtons and going back to our jam back we can see that that is simply option c so again you see very very simple questions um Let's take a couple more just because they're a little bit different. If you look at this one now, 2002 question one, 2002 question one on your O3 schools jab app. This one has a diagram, right? And now there are two points. We are stretching the wire from E to F. And E to F on the horizontal align with P to Q. So remember, Q is at 0 0.2 and P is at 0 0.1 Therefore, the force being applied within that region must be 0 0.2 minus 0 0.1, which is 0 0.1 Newton. However, on the other hand, for your distance or your extension, you're going from E to F, which is actually going from 0 0.05 to 0 0.1. 0 0.1 minus 0 0.05, which is 0 0.05 meters. Sorry, this is 5 meters. And automatically, automatically, what do I need? F equals to KE. Or in this case, the one the energy stored. We don't even need this instead. We're going to be using it for energy. We know it should be 1 over 2 FE. So 1 over 2 times 0 0.1 times 0 0.05. And again, we'll go back to our trusty calculator. And multiply 1 over 2 and 0 0.1 times 0 0.05. That will be 0 0.0025. But if you look at your options, they are in standard form, right? So move your points 1, 2, 3. 2.5 times 10 power minus 3 joules. And that is option B. If you see, these are all very, 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 very simple things. Just keep it running, keep it running. We shall solve just 10 questions in this one. In that, like I see 
as many different variations of the question as possible. Now, for question number nine, we are going to get 2000. And again, we're looking at question one. In this one, a catapult is used to hold a stone of mass 500 gram. M is 500 gram over 1000. That's 0 0.5 kg. And um, it's extended by 20 cm. E is 20 cm. Again, we convert to 100. That's 0 0.2 meters. With an applied force F. There's a force F, which we do not know. If the stone leaves the velocity of 40 meters per second, stone leaves the velocity of 40 meters per second. The value of F is what? So, that simply means that the potential energy elastic must not equate to the kinetic energy. And what's the elastic potential energy? 1 over 2 Fe must not be equal to 1 over 2 Mv squared. Let the 1 over 2 cancel each other out. F is unknown, but E is 0 0.2, M is 0 0.5, and this will be 40 squared over 0 0.2 over 0 0.2. And again, we return to our trusted calculator. Here we can say 1 over 2 times 40 squared divided by 0 0.2 and our answer is 4000 newton we go back to our jam up you can see that everything again is in standard form doesn't matter one two three four times ten to the power of three newtons see easy peasy and yeah let's now take one last question this will be the tenth question we shall solve and we shall finally call it quits on that elasticity in this one we are told if the stress on the wire if the stress on the wire is 10 raised to power 7 newton per meter squared 10 to the power 7 newton per squared meter and the wire is stretched from its original length of 10 cm we well, you know now original length is 10 cm compared to meters that's 0 0.1 meters to 0 .2, 10 0.05 centimeters. So the final length is 10.05 centimeters. Now, um, that means if you remember, what we need is extension, right? Extension is final length minus initial length. Um, let's convert 10.05 over 100 will be. 0 0.1005 meters right yeah so bringing this into my formula for extension 0 0.1005 minus 0 0.1 and that should give you 0 0.0005 meters now in case we ever doubt your calculations please always confirm your calculator and yes, we are correct, triple zero. So, we have been asked in this question to find the Young's modulus of the wire. Now, I know extension. If you remember, based on the fact that I know stress, if I want to find strain, I know that my strain is extension over original length. So, that would be 0 0.0005 over 0 0.1. And again, calculator 0 0.0005 over 0 0.1. That will give you 0 0.005. One of the zeros has left. But now my strain has no units. So just rounding it up here, my Young's models, as we all know, is stress over strain. So that will be 10 raised to the power 7 over 0 0.005. Now, this is where we have a mathematical issue. We can't press this to our calculator that we have for jam. So what do we do? Don't forget that this is the same thing as saying 1 times 10 to power 7, right? So when I'm going to work, I'm going to work with just these numbers first. On my calculator, I can actually press 1 divided by 0 0.005. 
and that gives me 200 then don't forget about this guy that's 10 to power 7 and if i try to put this in standard form my point is going to go back two times adding two right here so that will be 2 times 10 to the power 9 the same per squared meters and going back to my options so i can see that that is option d so um with that we've come to an end of this class again brought to you by o3 schools jam app please um i hope you've learned something from this class if you did please subscribe to this channel so you can learn um on that different topics different subjects also information as regards your jam admission process all brought to you by o3 schools thank you very much my name is atanasius